All right, quick little video here for those that are looking at using something like the Taurus ring, the tube, or the ring itself. You'll find these objects in the drop down menu here on the right hand side. And just with your experience using Tinkercad, you know that you can resize these objects using these grab points here. In fact, you can select it and you can even enter in the dimensions that you want to use for these objects. However, if you want more control over the dimensions and the shape and the overall look of these objects, I cannot recommend enough to take a look at the drop down menu when you select these various objects. And this drop down menu is located here on the right hand side. So first, let's take a look at the Taurus ring because it has a number of settings here. So on the right hand side, you're going to notice that we have radius, we have the tube setting, we have the number of sides as well as the number of steps. Let's take a look at the radius and the tube setting because these are actual measurements. You'll see by default that the radius is set to 7.5 and the tube is set to 2.5. Well, what does that actually mean? These again are measurements and they are in millimeters. So if we're talking about the radius, the radius for this Taurus ring is set to 7.5. Well, where is that number coming from? Because according to these dimensions, it's a 20 by 20. So the radius is actually going to be the measurement between the center point of our torus ring here and the midpoint of the tube. So it's not measuring it from the center point to the outside edge, nor is it measuring it from the center point to the inside edge. It's actually measuring it to the midpoint of our tube here. And that would be 7.5 millimeters. So with that said, if we were to increase the radius, let's take the slider here and make it larger, we're obviously going to increase the size of that ring when it comes to the radius. However, the ring or the tube itself does not change size. And that's what the tube setting is all about. So let's bring this back down to the default 7.5. And let's take a look at the tube. Now the tube is also measured in millimeters and the tube itself is the measurement between the midpoint of our tube here to the outside edge of that tube. Similarly, you could also make the argument that's also the same measurement from the midpoint of our tube to the inside edge. So with this measurement, it is 2.5 millimeters from the midpoint of our tube to the outside edge, as well as 2.5 from the midpoint of our tube to the inside edge that would give the tube thickness of five millimeters. So if we were to increase the tube measurement now, it will increase the thickness of our tube because we've now increased that distance between the midpoint of our tube and the outside edge. So understanding these measurements allows you to determine the size of the whole of your torus ring. If it has a radius of 7.5 millimeters and a tube setting of 2.5 millimeters, with some simple math, you can determine that the whole radius is 5 millimeters or 10 millimeters in diameter. And using your knowledge of the radius setting and tube setting, you can adjust the size of the whole of the torus ring. Now, when it comes to the sides and the steps, the best way to try to illustrate what this does is to simply play around with the settings here. Right now, the number of sides is set to 24. However, if we were to increase that value, you're going to notice that it has an impact on the surface of this torus ring that we have here. If we were to decrease it, you can see what it's doing there now. We have set this to eight sides. And if you were to count the number of sides that make up our torus ring here, it is made up of eight flat sides. So if we were to increase the number of sides, you would start to smooth out the surface of your torus ring here and give it a much more smooth, rounded appearance. Now, what about the steps? Steps works in a very similar way. And again, best way to explain this is to simply just play around with the setting. If we were to take the number of steps and decrease it, you can start to see here what it does to our torus ring. The actual shape of the ring is impacted with this setting. So right now, this ring is made up of seven sides. However, if we were to increase this, we would start to smooth out those sides as we increase it to a higher and higher value. And again, creating a very smooth like surface when it comes to your torus ring. So what about the tube shape now? The tube shape is very similar, obviously, to the torus ring. And when you select it, you're going to notice again, some values here listed on the right. 
However, it is slightly different in terms of what these values are telling you. For example, the radius. When it comes to the tube, the radius is the measurement between the center of this tube and the outside surface of that tube. So in this case, it is 10 millimeters. And that's the reason why here, when you click on the overall dimensions of your tube, you can see that it is 20 millimeters across. This was different than what we saw in the torus ring, where the radius was the measurement between the center of our torus ring to the midpoint of this tube. So with that said, the radius, as we increase it, you can see the impact it will have on the size of your tube. The larger the radius, the larger the tube. What about the wall thickness? By default, the wall thickness is set to 2.5 millimeters. And what that measurement is, is the actual thickness of the wall from the outside edge to the inside edge of the wall of your tube. This is a distance of 2.5 millimeters. Now notice what also happens when you adjust the value of the wall thickness. When you adjust the value of the wall thickness, and let's make it larger, you're going to notice that the wall thickness becomes larger, but towards the inside of your tube. The radius is maintained at 10 millimeters, so that's why this outside edge never moves outward. It stays as 10 millimeters. So that brings us back to the torus ring. So why does it, in the torus ring, when we increase the tube size of our torus ring, it makes the overall size of our torus ring slightly larger. It is no longer 20 millimeters, it is now 26 millimeters in width and depth. But don't forget, if you were to take a look at the radius, which we defined as being the center of our torus ring to the midpoint of your tube or ring itself, that radius has still maintained a 7.5 millimeter measurement. So slightly different ways that we measure the radius for the torus ring compared to the tube results in slightly different changes when you start to adjust the values of wall thickness versus tube size. So just like we saw with the torus ring, if you understand these measurements, you can figure out the whole of the ring with a radius of 10 millimeters and a wall thickness of 2.5 millimeters, you can calculate that the radius of the hole in that ring is 7.5 millimeters. Now getting back to the tube, when it comes to the number of sides, you're going to notice that it has very similar impact when it comes to the number of sides as we saw back with the torus ring. However, we do have this added setting here of bevel and bevel changes this edge here of our tube. Not only on the top edge, but also on the bottom edge as well. And you can see what happens here as we start to increase the value of our bevel. Now, bevel segments, as we increase that, starts to change how that bevel is shaped. Going from one bevel segment and moving our way up, increasing the value of the number of bevel segments, we start to smooth out how this beveled edge is shaped. All right, so what about the ring? When we select the ring, you're going to notice we have a very different looking settings panel here on the right. And in fact, if you've ever worked with something like Sketch Tool, this is similar to the Sketch Tool. You're going to notice that we have this shape here and we have these grab points here that we can actually click and drag and manipulate. This shape represents the cross section of your ring here. So rather than using values, you're able to change the cross sectional shape of your ring by basically using a click and drag interface. So if we were to take this and take this grab point on the side and start to move it outward, you can see here what we've started to do with our ring. Similarly, if I had to take the one on top, I can shape it out so it takes on this kind of shape where we thin out the top. Now, each grab point also has with it these handlebars. And these handlebars allow you to take this, click and drag it, and change how that line curves around that point. I can take these handlebars and stretch them out 
to increase the amount of influence this setting has as I start to move it around. So again, when it comes to the ring, this is a very different type of interface compared to the torus ring and compared to the tube. However, using the drop down menu for these different objects allow you to shape and size and adjust your ring or tube or torus ring in many different ways that you could not do just by simply changing the dimensions using click and drag by these grab points or entering changes to the depth or the height of your object. So if you're looking to get more out of these shapes, take a look at the settings on the right. And I hope that helped and I hope that made sense. Good luck to you and we'll see you on the next video.